Hello everyone. Uh, this is the second part of my video. Uh, in this video, I will con continue with my demonstration of performing two-way MANOVA or factorial MANOVA. So uh, we discussed, uh, let's see here. We were discussing this example in my first part. So we are interested in determining the degree to which gender and job satisfaction affect income and years of education among employees. We went through all the data description here, the research question here, and we went ahead and tested all the assumptions. Now we will go ahead and uh, test the last assumption, which is the homogeneity of covariance and variance and covariance matrices, and we'll perform uh, factorial, factorial MANOVA. So uh, that's the data we have here. We have transformed a couple of variables here, uh, our income two and education two uh, for details C part one. So those are both set to scale label because they're dependent variable and they are continuous. So we can treat them as a scale or intervals uh, data. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and perform the factorial MANOVA here. So I will go to analyze gen general linear model multivariate here. Already have this thing here, but I'm gonna take these things out. Start all over again. So my dependent variables are our income to and education to my factors are gender respondent sex here and job satisfaction okay so model we we're gonna go ahead and perform full factorial one over here so we're gonna leave it default plots we're gonna see the plots as well so I would like to plot job satisfaction on horizontal axis and sex on separate lines. Continue here. Postdoc test, uh, we cannot do it on gender because we just have two labels, but uh, job satisfaction has four, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna test for chef here. Continue here. Save uh, nothing here. Options, uh, we want to show the descriptive statistics, estimated, estimates of effect size, no need for observed power as such, but let's say we're gonna leave it there and homogeneity test. That's where we're gonna see whether uh, our variance, covariance matrix, uh, uh, matrices are equal across all groups. We have eight groups in here, so that's something you have to keep in mind. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that here, continue here, and we're gonna say okay here. So, first thing first, we to check for our uh, homogeneity of variance and covariance assumption. So, for that, we're gonna go to the boxes test of equality of covariance matrix or matrices. So this is not significant, which is good, uh, which says that uh, the covariance matrices for of the dependent variables are equal across all groups. So that's good. Uh, second, you know, we, we should always look for, uh, this was like, you know, treating our two dependent variable collectively and testing that collective combination across all eight groups. But Levine's test does it for each individual dependent variable across eight groups. So here you see that our income to uh, is non-significant. That means uh, uh, it has equal variance across all eight groups. But education looks like uh, the, uh, it, it, this is significant at 0 0.05 label. So looks like. Uh, looks like it's not equal across all eight groups but since our boxes test is based on multivariate um, testing so we're gonna go with this one we'll still still go ahead and perform one over here
so once we are done with the the uh, test of equality of uh, covariance matrices we'll go ahead and look for the plot because plot will help us understand what's going on so i'm going to go to the profile plots here so this is basically plots mean for every group um, okay so here uh, we are looking at our income to how it di differs across uh, all four levels of job satisfaction and two levels of gender as you see that the blue one is the male green one is the female so it looks like male always have higher earnings compared to females and looks like there is no interaction here uh likewise if you look at uh, the education uh here uh, you see a different pattern for example you see an interaction effect because these lines are crisscrossing each other uh they're all overlapping here so so there is an interaction between uh job satisfaction and gender when it comes to the education level what what does that mean well uh if you see here uh looks like female uh, tends to have um, higher education compared to male uh, in the very satisfied group so those who are very satisfied female tends to have higher education than the male but the things change as you uh, go down the levels of job satisfaction from very satisfied to very dissatisfied so at very dissatisfied level looks like male tends to have much higher education compared to female there is an interaction here. Um, that's what the plot is showing, but we need to test this statistically. So again, uh, the same thing could be noticed uh, in our descriptive statistics here. So you see that means, uh, for example, we were talking about the education, right? So very satisfied of male have a lower education compared to female, but very dissatisfied male tends to have higher education than the female. That's what we have noticed across the, the line plot, line plots as well. So here also you can see that the male and the female, uh, when it comes to income, they are not, it doesn't look that different. They're very similar. So probably we might not be able to find a, a significant interaction effect as such, but we'll go and check this one out. So once we are done with the basic observation here, we'll move to the multivariate test here. And we're gonna use a Wilkes Lambda uh, because we have satisfied the multivariate uh, equality of variance and covariance matrices. Uh, but here, you know, results are same, whether you use the Pillai trace or Wilkes Lambda. So, so first thing when you look at the multivariate test is you should be looking at the interaction effect because if the interaction effects um, uh, interaction effects are significant then we're not going to look at the mean effect because uh, it will be very difficult to figure out uh, the mean effect if these two uh, independent variables are working collectively to affect the group of uh, dependent variable. So you should always look at the interaction effect first. So if the interaction effect is not significant, then you should go ahead and uh, basically, you know, uh, look for the main effects. Uh, but I've seen the in the literature that researchers still, even if this are, uh, interaction effect is significant, this will go ahead and interpret the main effect. So it all depends on your domain expertise as such. So let's go ahead and see the interaction effect here. Uh, interaction effect, as you see, is not significant, right? This is greater than 0 0.05. So there is no interaction uh, going on between the between the two independent variable, uh, which means that gender and uh, job satisfaction, they are not kind of collectively working to affect your dependent variables. So once, once we see that here, it's not uh, significant, we're gonna go ahead and interpret the mean effect. For uh, the gender, we see that uh, it is significant. So gender significantly affects the, the dependent variable, the combined dependent variable. Uh, 
so is a job satisfaction so they are all significant even you can look at any of this plate race or wheel slander they are both the same here they are both less than 0 0.05 here so they are both significant uh, and job satisfaction is also significant uh, you should also look at the multivariate effect size so here partial eta square shows you the effect size so here for example it tells you that uh, only 2.4 percent of the variation in the dependent variable or the combined dependent variable is being explained by the gender and only 1.7 percent uh, of the variation in the dependent variable or the combined dependent variable is being explained by the job satisfaction uh, so so they, the results are significant but the effect sizes, effect sizes are very small uh, so that's something you have to keep in mind so once you are done with the multivariate test we move on to univariate test here so we're going to go ahead and do the test of between subject effects here we will ignore the interaction because multivariate it was not significant and still you can see here it's not significant here as well that was kind of expected because the multivariate uh, analysis it was not interaction effect was not significant so but you look at the the uh gender here so gender you see uh gender is significantly uh, affecting your income uh, employees income but not the education uh, years of education likewise the uh, job satisfaction is significantly affecting the employees income but not the uh, that their uh, years of education so here, uh, gender affecting uh, income of the employees, partial data square or the effect size is very low. It's only 2.3% here. And for job satisfaction and income, uh, it was only 3.1. They're significant, but the, the, the variation explained are very small. So that's something you have to keep in mind. They have very small effect sizes as such, okay? And uh, for education, the results were not significant uh, for both gender and job satisfaction. So that's you how to some, something that you have to keep in mind. So once you are done with the with the you know individual analysis here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the post hoc analysis. We're gonna look at the post hoc analysis here. yeah so once you look at the post hoc analysis here uh if you see most of them are not significant so and that was kind of expected when we look at the descriptive statistics here they were looking very similar to each other so we can see that most of the differences you see here are uh happening because of the sampling error maybe uh but post hoc says uh, post hoc test does reveal one difference which is significant uh which is the uh, income uh for the people for the employees who are very satisfied they tend to be different than uh, moderately satisfied employees uh so mean difference is 1.5 like they earn slightly more the people who are very satisfied employees who are very satisfied they tend to earn a little more their income is more compared to the employees who are moderately satisfied and that is significant uh, here but other other effects are not significant so that's here something you have to keep in mind so education also we saw it uh, in the in the between subject effect education was not uh, significant Okay, so education are not significant here, but multivariate test we saw that the 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 combined effect was significant, you know, on job satisfaction and sex, so or gender. So, for example, education and income combined together had significant impact uh, when it compare when it comes to analyzing across job satisfaction and gender. Uh, so, they collectively they were significant, but individually uh individually the education was not significant and even in the post hoc test uh if you see here 
education, nothing is significant here across any group. So even the income, the only difference were between very satisfied and moderate, moderately, moderately satisfied. So uh, that is something you have to keep in mind while analyzing the MANOVA and uh, this is how you should perform the MANOVA. So with this, uh, I'm gonna stop my video here. Thank you very much for listening.